Hello, today I will be teaching Old Order Institutional Decay and Chosun Korea. For five centuries from 1392 to the arrival of modern imperialism in the late 1800, Korea underwent a continual process of cultural change and integration under the Chosun state and Yi dynasty. The process by which inhabitants of the peninsula developed into a single people with a shared culture and identity are clearly recognizable today as Korea had begun long before. Under Chosun, it was largely completed. The dynastic founder Yai Shonggi, after deposing the last Koiro monarch, made himself the king. He was posthumously designated King Taijo, the first of the Yai dynasty that was to rule Korea till 1910. Yai Shonggi placed his supporters, whom he named Dynastic Foundation Merit Subject, in key position, and these men dominated Korea for the next few decades. They established institutions of the new state and promoted the ideals of Neo-Confucianism. The new king officially named the state as Chosun, so the period of Korean history from 1392 to 1910 is referred to as either Chosun or Yai dynasty period. Korea borrowed from the Chinese practice of renaming a state when a new dynasty came to power. To make a new state for his new dynasty, Yang Shonggi and his supporters in 1394, betraying the geomantic force of Kyosong was exhausted, established a new capital at Hangyang, today called Seoul. The city was protected on the north by mountains and on the south by Han River. It was also a practical location since it was in the agriculturally rich and centrally located region. Yong Shonggi justified the new dynasty with the concept of the mandate of heavens. According to Yai and his supporters, the last years of the Koryo saw ruled by immoral men who ruled through puppet kings. The new dynasty carried out important reforms, most notable Rand reform. Prior to his assumption to the throne, Yong Shonggi carried out a comprehensive land survey destroying old regimes of public and private land. The court created a new set of land registers with the intention of making sure of less land escaped taxation. The king confiscated the huge holdings of the Buddhist temples and moved that weakened institutional Buddhism and that was exhaustively embraced by the anti-Buddhist among his followers. The former temple holdings were redistributed to his supporters and added to the tax base. Much like Silla and Koryo predecessors, the early Yai kings uh, sought to consolidate a royal control over the state. The new dynasty was largely the creation of an alliance of military men such as Yai and his group of scholar officials eager to reform the society by creating new state based on Neo-Confucian principles. The most important of these officials was Kong To John. He was the chief political advisor when Yai came to power. Kong used his influence to secure key position. His most important contribution was drawing up the status for the government of Chosun, an outline for the new government. Many of the institutions of the new dynasty were based on this outline. 
a central part of Kong To Jon program was land reform. In late Koryo, most land was in the hands of large landholders. Most peasants worked as tenants, paying a customary one and a half of their crops in rents. Based on the Confucian ideal that the ruler governed with the concern for the welfare of the people, as well as on the practical need to bring more land under government taxation. He called for converting all lands into public land. Most Koryo officials were kept on by the new dynasty. Only a small number of them were purged. Many, if not most, of the great families that dominated late Koryo society survived into the new dynasty. Rather than a replacement of one dominant social group by another, a number of people joined the ruling aristocracy of landed officials and scholars. Besides being more centralized, the promotion of Neo-Confucianism gave the new chosen state a more rigid ideological orientation than had been the case of Koryo or Silla. The chosen state. The structure of the chosen state was not fundamentally different from its predecessors. At the apex was the king. Under him was a complex set of bureaucratic institutions to carry out his rule. The highest organ of the government was Yu Jongbu, the state council. It was similar to the privy council of Koryo, except that it had fewer members, only seven. The state council had general powers of surveillance over all government offices and affairs, which were known as SOSA, General Supervisory Authority. The three highest ranking members, the highest state councillors, were specially important. The king frequently referred to them and they often carried out public policy independently of the other member. Most state council members, however, came up through civil examination system. Gradually, during the long Yai dynasty, the state council declined in importance. The day-to-day -day administration was carried out by Yuk Cho, six ministries, personal, taxation, rights, military affairs, punishment and public works. Each ministry was headed by a board consisting of three or four ministerial. Their direct access to the king made the ministers important. Another important institution was the Sung Jong Wan Royal Secretariat, an organ that transmitted documents from the king. At times it acted on its own without regard to other government bodies. There were six members, each in charge of dealing with one of the six ministries. Two recorders in the royal secretariat kept diaries of daily activity. There were eight provinces which were still the province of Korea today. Each province had a centrally appointed governor and six government departments based on those of the central government. The province were divided into counties of which there were several types. The members of the counties were around 300. Each county headed by a centrally appointed county magistrate. The county magistrate was an important figure who represented the state at the local level. Each county also had a local agency organized by Yang Ban residents, which yielded considerable influence. The local agency was directed by Chosu overseers and his assistants and undertook responsibilities for assisting the magistrate. Rectifying public morals and scrutinizing the conduct of county's petty functionaries called Yang Nu. The local agency served as a power base for the local Yang Ban. The Yai rulers 
uh, maintain the basic classification of officials into the young ban two sides consisting of moon ban civil official and less prestigious muban military officials were graded into nine ranks a practice developed in china another feature of the yai dynasty was the significant role of the state historians they promoted neo confucian ideals the monarch and officials of the yai dynasty took history seriously as a guide to state craft Joseon era Koreans regarded history and the role of historian as matter of great importance through their writing of history yai dynasty historians promoted the ideals of neo confucianism the examination system of the Joseon state under the Joseon the examination system became most central to the state Most official in Joseon Korea were selected through the examination system. The lower level Sokwa examination began at the provincial level. The higher level examination the Takwa was a real gateway to public office holdings. <music> Education Education in traditional Korea was valued as a means of personal self-cultivation and as a way of achieving status and power. The basic structure of state Joseon schooling was set up in the early 15th century. However, there were significant changes during the subsequent centuries. Education trained the cultivated generalist literacy in korea among male was probably high by pre modern standard and most likely increased in the 18th and 19th centuries private academics also grew during this period the scholar teacher held an exalted position during this period consequently the scholar obtained an utmost sacred status The learned man was more than a scholar or a teacher he was the moral arbiter of society and source of guidance at the village as well as the state level thus the value placed on learning and the position of teacher in society was extremely high this tradition of equating edu educating and scholarship was moral authority hence giving students and scholars the right and duty to criticize official dumb has been one of the most persistent feature of korean education it is a tradition still felt in korea today agricultural improvements and the state The Joseon state was based on an agricultural society. The prosperity of the state was a result of the improvements in farming that eventually resulted in an increase in the population. A number of other improvements also took place in the farming. Farmers were beginning to make greater use of fertilizers that meant less time letting the land remain fallow interest in agricultural improvement by the elite is reflected in the appearance of agricultural manuals now they produce their own adapted to loyal condition new land was brought under cultivation according to national level tax records the amount of arable land which totaled about 930000 kyol at the beginning of the 15th century reached 170000 kyol by the middle of the 16th century these records are notoriously unreliable and much of the land went unreported to evade taxation but they do suggest that a considerable expansion of agriculture occurred during the early Joseon dynasty
military and foreign affairs with the potentially dangerous tribal people in the north and Japanese raiders on the coast. In the 15th century, Korea maintained a policy of military vigor. Early Choson foreign policy centered around securing its legitimacy, establishing correct relation with China and securing its borders from the threats of its tribal neighbors on the Manchurian border and from Japanese pirates along the southern coast. Choson Korea underwent a long-term effort to bring government, social institutions and personal conduct into conformity with Neo-Confucian norms. Neo-Confucianism was not the last foreign ideology that Korea embraced with zeal. Later, some Koreans fever for Christianity and Marxism. But only under the North Korea would these be such an extraordinary effort to make society in conformity to a dogmatically held vision. Although the voluminous historical records kept during the Yai dynasty read as a perpetual and vicious struggle for power, their conflicts and intrigues usually involved only a small number of elite officials and high-ranking aristocrats in the capital. That is, the factional conflicts were largely confined to a small upper stratum of society. They did not mean the country at large was in trouble. Yai politics and the moral language it was couched in were convoluted, contentions and occasionally violent. Yet, for the most part of the institution of state worked well and functioned for nearly five centuries without breaking down. In fact, no ruling dynasty in China, Japan, Southeast Asia or Europe, except perhaps the Ottomans, lasted so long without a major upheavals. To summarize, it can be said that from 1392 to the arrival of modern imperialism in the late 1800s, Korea underwent a continuous change and a new dynasty emerged in Korea known as the Chosun dynasty under the Yai dynasty. The process by which the inhabitants of the peninsula developed into a single people was uh, a great story and they had a cultural identity and they underwent a large change throughout Korea. The new dynasty founded by the Yai Songi uh, later after deposing the last Koryo monarch uh, made himself the king of Korea and he was a great king. He brought about different changes in Korea. He and his supporters brought believed in the ideals of Neo-Confucianism. Korea borrowed from the Chinese practice of renaming a state and when a new dynasty emerged. So therefore, this uh, dynasty was known as the Yai dynasty and they had its their new capital in Yanghang, today called Seoul. The city was protected on the north by mountains and on the south by the Han River. It was practical location since it was uh, in the agriculturally rich area. And this uh, city was a great city uh, during the uh, Chosun period. During this period, the Yang Songi uh, or the Yang dynasty brought about different changes in Korea. They believed in neo-confusion ideals. There was great change in the educational system, in the uh, examination system, in the agricultural system and also in the total structuring of the state. So it is seen that during the Chosun period or during the Yang uh, dynasty period, Korea went uh, through a dramatic change which brought about a great change in the total Korean scenario. Therefore, through these changes, Korea came into, there came into existence a new type of governmental structure through which 
Korea uh, became a very important power in the Asian politics. Thank you.